Hello, I'm Mark Lonefeld, OSU Extension Educator in Agriculture and Natural Resources from Monroe County. Today I want to share with you some pictures and information to help you identify weeds in your hay and pasture fields. For each weed that we'll discuss today, there will be at least one photo and other information to help you correctly identify these weeds. Proper identification is important if you're planting a herbicide treatment or if the area or the forage that the weeds are in is going to be consumed by livestock because some weeds can be toxic and poisonous. Purple dead nettle is our first weed. This is a winter annual. When this plant is mature, it has square stems and gently lobed triangular shaped leaves. Flowers are crowded at the end of the branches and form under the leaves. Our second plant is henbit. This is also a winter annual. The mature plants have square stems also and whorled leaves and showy pink to purple flowers. The flowers are often above the upper leaf and the whorls and the leaves are deeply lobed. Our next plant is ground ivy. This is a low growing creeping perennial. It can reproduce by seeds but most often reproduces by stems that root at the nodes. This also is a square stem plant with opposite position leaves that are rounded or heart shaped. Our next plant is common mallow. It's often confused with ground ivy because of the shape of the leaves. This plant can grow as a winter annual, a summer annual, or it can actually act as a biennial. It depends on the location and the growing season. It will grow erect, but it's more often prostrate in its growth closer to the ground. The plant has a rounded stem with alternating leaf pattern. Another weed of the spring and late fall is chickweed. This is a low growing winter annual that can form thick dense patches. Reproduction is by seed. More than one generation can be produced in cool years with moist areas. Small white flowers with five petals are characteristic of this common weed. Our next weed is called yellow rocket. This is generally a biennial with deep green glossy foliage. The basal rosette is shown in the bottom right of the picture here and this would be the first year's growth. The flowering stem is reproduced the second year. This plant reproduces by seed. The bright yellow flowers appear in early spring and this plant that we're seeing here would actually be a second year plant. Our next plant is broadleaf plantain. This plant is a rosette forming perennial with broad oval leaves. Reproduction is by seed and this plant has a slender fibrous taproot and even can grow in compacted soils. Buckhorn plantain is another uh, narrow leaf perennial that forms a basal rosette also. Reproduction is by seed and by new shoots from the plant or from the base of the plant. The seed head is a dense cone-like spike on the end of a leafless stem. Our next plant is horse nettle. This is an erect perennial that spreads by spreading rhizomes and by seeds. Its leaves are alternate with the older leaves being wavy, lobed, and prickly on both sides. The mature fruit that are seeds are yellow berries, but they are green when they are immature. The berries of this plant are poisonous. Eastern Black Nightshade is our next plant. This is an erect branching summer annual or sometimes it acts as a short-lived perennial. The plant has mature foliage. It is slightly hairy with stems that are smooth. The mature fruit seed are glossy black spherical berries as seen in the upper right portion of the photo below. This plant is also poisonous to livestock. Our next plant is smooth ground cherry. 
This is a perennial with deeply rooted, thick, fleshy rhizomes. It reproduces by seed and by rhizome. The fruit is covered with a paper, bladder-like case and the flowers are greenish yellow with a purple center. This plant's berries can also be poisonous. Our next plant is yellow nut sedge. This is a perennial with triangular stems and long grass-like leaves that are yellowish green. This plant can reproduce by seed, but mainly it reproduces by tubers on the end of the rhizomious type roots. Dormant tubers can remain viable of this plant for greater than 10 years in the soil. Our next plant is hemp dogbane. This is a native perennial weed. It grows one to four feet tall and reproduces by roots and by seeds. This plant resembles milkweed and the shoots emerge in late May or June but they have a reddish color to them. The next plant we want to talk about is milkweed. This is a perennial with a thick unbranched stem. This plant reproduces from seeds or rhizomes and the stems of this plant produce a milky sap when broken. The opposite shaped leaves, sometimes they're whirled, are oblong to elliptic with a prominent white mid vein down the center. Our next plant is Canada thistle. This is a persistent perennial that spreads by windblown seed or by rhizomes. The leaves are deeply lobed with spiny margins. The flowers are pink to purple in color as seen in the top left of the picture below. Our next plant is called bull thistle. This is a biennial with prominent spines. A basal rosette is formed the first year while erect branching stems develop the second year. Its spine tip bracts support reddish purple flowers and the picture shown here would be a second year plant. Our next plant is called cockleburr. This is an erect growing branch summer annual with distinctively prickly burrs. The burrs are elliptical to egg shaped and the leaves are spirally arranged with deeply tooth margins. The next plant we have is burdock. This is a biennial producing a large coarse leaf rosette the first year and much more erect branch stem shape the second year. The plant produces spiny persistent burrs that terminate in velcro like hooks on the ends. This plant forms a deep taproot. Our next plant is yellow foxtail. While this is not a broadleaf plant like we've been talking about, this yellow foxtail is still considered a weed by most even though it's a grass. A clump forming summer annual that reproduces by seed and has a characteristic bottle brush or foxtail seed head. The stems often have a reddish color at the base down near the soil. Green foxtail and giant foxtail are very similar species. The next weed we'll talk about is Jimson weed. This is an annual that grows to five feet tall. The leaves are coarsely serrated along the edge and they can be three to eight inches long. This has a hard spiny seed capsule that forms before it bursts open when ripe. The seeds of this plant can be toxic. Our next weed is common ragweed. This is an erect branching summer annual. The pollen from this plant is most often or most commonly the cause of hay fever. This plant reproduces from seed and the leaves are deeply cleft on the margins forming rounded to pointed lobes on the tips of the leaves. Our next plant, giant ragweed. This is an erect summer annual that can reach six feet tall. This plant reproduces by seed and mature plant leaves generally have three lobes but sometimes they can have five deep lobes. Our next plant is red root pigweed. This is an erect branch summer annual 
reproduction is from seed and the small greenish flowers are produced in a dense, stiff, spike-like terminal shoot. The fibrous taproot is usually red and can accumulate nitrates when conditions are right and be toxic to livestock. Spiny amaranth is our next plant. This is a summer annual that grows erect and freely branches. The roots are fibrous from a well-developed taproot. This plant has a pair of sharp spines at the base of most leaves. Our next weed is called smartweed. This is an erect or ascending, often branched, summer annual. Reproduction of this plant is by seed. The stems are green or reddish with bright pink to white flowers that form on a spike-like cluster. Our next plant, smooth bed straw. This is an erect to prostrate mat forming perennial. Reproduction of this plant is by rhizomes and stolons. Stems are smooth and have a whorled leaf pattern as seen in the upper left of the picture below. The mature plants have numerous small white flowers. Our next plant is uh, new to Ohio. This is called spotted knapweed. It is a perennial, it is invasive, and it's a plant that can produce large amounts of seed from numerous terminal and axillary heads. Grazing capacity can be reduced 65 to 90 percent if this plant is left untreated in hay and pasture fields. Queen Anne's Lace, also known as Wild Carrot. This plant is an erect growing biennial reaching three to four feet in height from a tough fibrous taproot. This plant reproduces by seed and can produce up to 4,000 seeds per plant. This plant has a flat topped umbel shaped flower with white petals. Our next weed is ironweed. This is a warm season perennial, has a fibrous taproot and forms rhizomes, but reproduces primarily by seed. This plant has a spreading flat top flower with 13 to 30 purple colored florets. The next weed we'll talk about is goldenrod. This is a tall erect perennial. It reproduces by seed or rhizomious type growth and can form large patches. The flowers are yellow and open in August here in Ohio and they'll remain there until frost. The next plant we have is called Johnson grass. This is a uh, coarse textured perennial grass. It reproduces by seed and by aggressive thick rhizomes. The seed head is a large open coarse purplish panicle. Leaves and stems can be poisonous during drought or when this plant is recently frosted. Broom sedge. This is a clump forming perennial most commonly recognized by the dormant stage as a copper tan clump of dried leaves and stems. This plant reproduces by seeds and short rhizomes. The next plant we have, the last two plants actually, are really not weeds, but they are problem causing shrubs. Both are invasive species and will overtake large areas of land if not controlled. The first one is multiflora rose, a perennial prickly stem shrub. This plant reproduces by seeds and runner stems which form advantageous roots. The white flower that bloom in June and form clusters of red berries. This plant is often seen in untreated fence rows. Autumn olive is our last plant. This is a medium to large invasive but deciduous shrub. This plant reproduces by seeds and is dispersed by birds and other animals. Autumn olive can grow in poor soil and in low pH soil. I hope this segment will help you correctly identify weeds you are dealing with. For herbicide recommendations, use OSU Extension Publication Number 789, The Weed Control Guide. This is a valuable resource or contact members of the Ohio State University Forage Team 
for more information about these type plants. Thank you.